momentum and Newton's law. You must be wondering how linear momentum and Newton's second law of motion can be related. It's pretty interesting relationship. So in order to talk about how they are related, we first need to talk about the linear momentum. And as we know that linear momentum P is equal to mass times velocity. What I'm going to do, I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to T. And if I do that, I will write dy dt of P is equal to dy dt of mv. And as we know that m is constant, so we will take that thing out. And if we do that, we have only velocity left. So we'll write that is equal to m times dy dt of velocity. And we know that dy dt of velocity is dv by dt. So we will write that is equal to m dv by dt. Let's simplify further and if we do that we will write dy dt of p is equal to m times acceleration because dv by dt is acceleration. So basically what we are doing we are writing mass times acceleration which is over here and we know that mass times acceleration is f external. So basically there is a relation between change in linear momentum and external force and they are also related to mass times acceleration. So do you think you can make any statement? Now let's make a statement. So the statement can be the rate of change of linear momentum of a body is directly proportional to the external force applied to the body and it works in the direction of the applied force. So basically if a linear momentum is given in terms of time or I should say if the linear momentum is a function of time and if you differentiate the linear momentum what will you get? you will get an external force because f external is equal to the differentiation of linear momentum. Now let's establish another relationship. So let the acceleration of the body of mass m is given as a is equal to axi plus ayj plus ajk and we know that f external is equal to mass times acceleration. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to substitute the value of acceleration from here and if we do that we will write f external is equal to mass times inside the bracket axi plus ayj plus ajk. Now let's distribute mass inside the bracket and if we do that we will write f external is equal to maxi plus mayj plus m a z k and as you can see this is the x component of force this is the y component of force and this is the z component of force so we can write f external is equal to f x i plus f y j plus f z k and we know that f x is m a x f y is m a y and f z is m a z so let's write that and if we do that, we'll write f of x is equal to m a x and that is equal to change in the linear momentum along x axis, which is equal to m times dv x over dt because change in linear momentum is equal to external force. In the same way, we will write f y is equal to m a y and that is equal to m dv y over dt and f z is equal to m a z and that is equal to m times d v z over d t and this is how we will establish the relationship between linear momentum and Newton's second law of motion.